With the year coming to a close, let's look back at 2023. Canada has continued to stand up for what's right in the world, from resettling Uyghurs and easing immigration measures for Iranians, and our continued support for Ukraine and their fight against Putin's illegal invasion. We've remained steadfast in our commitment to human rights around the world. 2023 saw record-breaking wildfires across BC and Canada, highlighting the necessity of taking climate action now. So we announced the, first, the world's first ever cap on emissions from the oil and gas sector. We eliminated fossil fuel subsidies and we're continuing to support clean tech, including a $400 million investment to electrify transit in BC. I put forth a motion to protect BC's old growth forests and we updated the Canadian Environmental Protection Act to create a right to a healthy environment for the first time in Canada's history. We announced a $1 billion nature agreement with BC and First Nations to protect old growth forests and our unique ecosystems here. We delivered on a health care with an $198 billion investment in Canada, including a tailored agreement for BC. We announced several investments for affordable housing across the riding, including almost $90 million to build 238 affordable units throughout the Sea of Sky and on Bowen Island, and 1.4 million funding for 156 units in West Vancouver. So I'm proud to represent such a diverse riding and I'm honoured to celebrate a variety of holidays with constituents including Pride, Vandy Chordiwas, Nauru's Hanukkah, Lunar New Year and Canada Day as well as host for the first time a constituency open house community barbecue and we also observe National Day for Truth and Reconciliation and Remembrance Day. So we've accomplished a lot this year and I'm proud of this but I'm looking forward to continuing to do even more next year.